good happy Thursday evening. I'm Riley King and welcome to the Riley King newscast right here on the Riley King Network. We have a lot of news to get to this Thursday evening, so let's begin. First step, we begin with COVID-19 updates. Let's take a look at the COVID-19 in New Hampshire important information and latest data. And here is a look at that information for all of you. There are 8,007 number of people in New Hampshire have tested positive for COVID-19. 6,939,645 number of people in the United States have tested positive. 438 number of deaths from COVID-19 in New Hampshire. 728 number of people who have been hospitalized with COVID-19 in New Hampshire. And 201-861 number of deaths from COVID-19 in the United States. Let's take a look at this current map of New Hampshire where current cases of COVID-19 are. Manchester 33. Let's take a look at this map of New Hampshire where total cases of COVID-19 are. Manchester 2031. And now let's take a look at these three charts here. Let's start with the first chart here. New cases each day in New Hampshire in the purple daily new positive COVID-19 cases in the orange new hospitalization and in the red are the deaths. And let's take a look at this chart here. Current cases in the purple total current COVID-19 cases and in the orange current hospitalizations. Now, let's take a look at this chart here. Total cases. In the purple, total positive COVID-19 cases. In the orange, total hospitalizations, red deaths, and blue recovered. Now let's take a look at this chart here. Each group of cases, female and male of cases, and risk information. And let's take a look at this chart here. Infections, hospitalizations, and deaths. And let's take a look at this chart here. Deaths, percent of New Hampshire population, race slash ethnicity of cases, and hospitalizations. And a reminder, your common symptoms. Fever, lack of smell, cough, difficult breathing, chills, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. How it spreads, and prevention tips. And be sure to stay with the Riley King Network for the latest of your COVID-19 information. Six-foot rule eased in New Hampshire restaurants if barriers placed between tables. Governor says new rule should allow restaurants to serve more customers. New Hampshire is easing restrictions for indoor dining in the state's restaurants, allowing them to serve people closer together as long as barriers are in place. New Hampshire restaurants had been allowed to open at 100% capacity, but that might have been limited by the size of the dining room. Different parties of customers had to be seated at least six feet apart. So, Many restaurants were unable to operate at the same capacity did before the COVID-19 pandemic. Under the new guidelines, restaurants can now place tables closer together as long as protective barriers are in place to separate the tables. Governor Chris Sununu said the change is being made as the weather gets colder and restaurants might not be able to continue outdoor dining. Sununu said the new plan has the approval of public health officials and restaurant owners. The governor said New Hampshire has proceeded cautiously with opening restaurants after parts of the country experienced outbreaks linked to reopening too quickly. He said contact tracing investigations in New Hampshire have shown 
that restaurants are not a source of widespread COVID-19 transmission. So easing of restrictions is warranted. Eighteen year old indicted on first degree murder charge in father's death. Joseph Bean accused of attacking father with hammer knife. An Antrim teenager has been indicted on the first degree murder charge in connection with the death of his father last year. Joseph Beam, 18, was indicted on one count of first degree murder in connection with the November 1st, 2019 death of his father, Jason Beam, 41. Prosecutors said Joseph Bean killed his father by assaulting him multiple times with a hammer and a knife. Joseph Bean was arrested after his father's body was found by firefighters who were called to a burning home on Greg Lake Road in Antrim. Jason Bean's body was found on a couch inside. Joseph Beam was a juvenile when he was arrested and his name was not released at the time. For the first time since 2016, part of New Hampshire is in extreme drought. Extreme drought area covers pockets of southern eastern part of the state. Nearly 10% of New Hampshire is now experiencing extreme drought conditions, according to an updated from the United States Drought Monitor. According to the Monitor's report released Thursday morning, 8.47% of the state is in extreme drought. The Areas include most of Stratford County and parts of Belknap, Merrimack, and Rockingham counties in a southeastern pocket of the state. Some spots are 10 to 12 inches of annual precipitation behind the normal calendar year pace. Nearly the entire rest of the state is in a severe drought, including all of eastern, northern, and central New Hampshire. Portions of the Monadnock region are seeing moderate drought. Stream flow in many areas of the northeast is very low for this time of year. Some of the areas hardest hit by the drought are reporting wells going dry in now wells needing to be dug. Given the monitoring drought impact, significant durations was shown in several areas from Pennsylvania to Maine. Brad Rippey of the U.S. Department of Agriculture wrote in a summary published today. This is the worst drought in New Hampshire since 2016 when several areas of the state experienced in extreme drought from August through December. New Hampshire wasn't out of that drought altogether until May 27, 2017. New England is the only area east of Mississippi River that is seeing extreme drought conditions. There is no rain forecast for the next few days but a system early next week could bring some beneficial rainfall for many areas. More than one million ballots printed ready for New Hampshire general election. Secretary of State says 482,850 absentee ballots will have been delivered to city and town clerks 
by this coming Friday. Second half, State Bill Gardner is far from ready at this point to make a final prediction of New Hampshire voter turnout in the November 3rd general election, but he, his staff, and city and town clerks are preparing for what Gardner says will probably be a massive turnout. State Supreme Court hears lawsuit over school funding. Several districts say the state not fulfilling constitutional obligations. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Ray Brewer. The fears may be canceled, but mainly Tuck's huge annual fear sale is back. And bigger than ever, with hundreds of hot tubs in stock and on their way, we can guarantee... In arguing before the state Supreme Court, the school districts say the $3,700 per student that the state provides is only about a third of what is necessary to meet the constitutional mandate to provide an adequate education. We're not asking that the state, okay, necessarily apply what our actual costs are. We're asking that the state apply a costing formula, okay, that is rational and based on real facts. A trial court ruled in favor of the school districts, but before the justices, the New Hampshire Solicitor General says that issue was never properly vetted. How do we know that you can't provide an adequate education based on this? You've got to prove that. You've got to prove what you can't provide. The lawyer for the plaintiff says that was proven, citing affidavits submitted by school superintendents. It was undisputed that these school districts cannot provide a constitutionally adequate education with the funding being provided by the state. Some judges wanted to know why the difference between actual costs and what the state provides is an evidence on the face of it that the state is failing to meet its burden. But the Solicitor General says those costs include far more than what is constitutionally mandated and shouldn't be taken at face value. That's sort of like trying to divine the cost of, say, an engine by looking at the sticker price of a car. Uh, the justices have a number of options before them, including sending it back to Superior Court for further review. There's no word yet on when they will issue their opinion, but typically it takes months. Reporting live outside the state Supreme Court in Concord, Ray Brewer, WMUR News Now. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And that is it for this Thursday evening edition of the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your Thursday evening, and I'll see you back here tomorrow for another newscast. Good night and goodbye, everyone.